I'm Doug Labar, Chief of the Division of Clinical Neurophysiology here at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Weill Cornell Medical Center. I wanted to say a few words about seizures, epilepsy, and some new treatments involving electrical stimulation to treat those conditions. A seizure is an event or an attack that occurs because there's suddenly excess electrical activity in the brain. If this happens to someone repeatedly, that person has epilepsy. The usual way we treat epilepsy is to try, try to reduce the probability of recurrence or how often those electrical discharges uh, occur by using a medication. The idea of the medication is to kind of cool down the uh, extra active electrical cells to produce less seizure activity. Most people taking a medication reduces or completely stops the seizure tendency and uh, those people are well controlled and have well controlled the epilepsy. On the other hand, there are people who do not have well controlled epilepsy, sometimes referred to, to as refractory, etc. kind of epilepsy. And in those people we think about alternative techniques which can involve surgery. One type of surgery involves an operation on the brain to remove the part of the brain that produces the seizures and that can be highly effective if there's a small source and it can be removed safely. If that is not the case, other kind of surgical approaches have been developed involving electrical stimulators. There are two currently uh, either in use or in development, basically uh, ones that stimulate a nerve outside of the brain versus uh, doing stimulation of nerves inside the brain. The one that's stimulates outside of the brain is a vagus nerve stimulator, which is a device which is uh, uh, implanted underneath the skin of the chest. A wire comes out of that and goes up into a nerve in the neck called the vagus nerve. Every couple of minutes the uh, device sends an electrical current up into the vagus nerve, which then sends information up to the top of the brain, which influences the brain activity to reduce the seizure tendency. This has been uh, FDA approved, Food and Drug Administration approved, uh, for use to treat uh, problematic seizures since 1997. Usually reduces the seizure rate significantly, usually does not take them away, but usually does make them less and less severe. The main advantage of this compared to the medications is that it has less medication side effects. Sometimes the medications make you drowsy, dizzy, and so forth. Uh, and also it helps people that have not done that well with the medication trials. The other kind of electrical stimulation approach is stimulating the brain itself from in, inside of the brain. And that's the, the one that has uh, undergone the most significant development at this point. It's called deep brain stimulation. In this case, some electrodes are uh, really like probes are inserted into a cent to the central part of the brain. And electrical stimulation, again, is delivered from some, uh, from some wires that go up to the electrodes, this time in the brain, again with a battery pack in the chest. Every couple of minutes, an electrical current is, is delivered to stimulate the central part of the brain, in, in this case, the anterior nucleus of the thalamus, which is a part of the brain which has a lot of kind of radiating connections that then influence seizure sources on the top of the brain. This is uh, it undergoing an F FDA uh, approval process of the results of a large clinical trial have been presented to the FDA. The panel which was convened by the FDA to review this did uh, vote in favor of uh, approval for potential general use for the public, which would probably be, would be we would probably be seeing uh, in a few years. Uh, there is one uh, additional kind of treatment which is not quite so far along another kind of brain stimulator called a responsive neurostimulator. In this case, the uh, again, the device contacts the brain directly as opposed to the vagus, which is, is a nerve outside of the brain. The responsive neurostimulator works by detecting seizures and sending a countershock to block the seizures uh, right at the seizure source. So the location is in the brain is different. The uh, way it works is a little bit different. The deep brain stimulator, the first one I mentioned, uh, runs all the time. The responsive neurostimulator detects seizures and sends, sends a countershock. So as we look ahead to the future, uh, we expect to see new and different approaches to the treatment of epilepsy. Uh, medications have been around for, well, centuries, uh, and uh, removing the brain source, uh, the seizure source, has been around at least for 100 years. We're now beginning to see a, a new era with, uh, with a programmable electrical devices for the treatment of refractory epilepsy.
electrical device has a battery and everybody's battery on everybody's device, well, for that matter, every other electronic piece of equipment we have will run out sooner or later. But typically, the Vegas nerve stimulator battery runs out at about eight years and the deep brain stimulator battery runs out in about one year. Obviously, the Vegas nerve stimulator has been under development and in use for longer and better and better batteries have been developed and it seems reasonable that we could expect um, better batteries for the deep brain stimulators in the future too. If the battery runs low, we use our devices which assess the device to detect the battery strength. If it does run low, another surgical procedure is required to replace the entire device. You can't open the device and put a new battery in. So the entire device is replaced. It has to be waterproof and biologically safe. So it, it is a very, it's a much simpler operation to replace just the device than to place the electrodes. It takes a few minutes. It's an outpatient procedure.